Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, the new weekly feature on NBC's all-star festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. By Aniston, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television. Here's Bing Crosby with a word about vacations. Oh, Ken, when you mention vacations, it brings a tear to the eye and a lump in my throat. Poor Uncle Herbert. Well, what happened to your Uncle Herbert? Uncle Herbert loves to fish. So on his vacation, he hired himself off all alone to a secluded spot way back in the woods. Poor Uncle Herbert. He uh, forgot his fishing pole? He forgot his Chesterfield. So friends, take a tip from me. Whether you're packing to take off for the weekend or for that long-anticipated vacation, pack a couple of cartons of those milder Chesterfields. When you take off on a trip like that, you, you like to go where you want and do what you want. So take along the cigarette that gives you what you want. Chesterfield. Chesterfield gives you its famous ABCs. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. Plus, no unpleasant aftertaste. Yep, the country's first and only cigarette taste panel reported. Of all brands tested, only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Vacation time, anytime. Take Chesterfield with you. <laughs> Now, Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction, in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight, the famous old investigator's case is entitled, The Case of Murder and the Strange Woman. Our scene opens in a rehearsal studio used by many famous Broadway stars. A pretty girl sits at the reception desk, and as a young man enters the door, her face lights up with excitement and admiration. A good-looking visitor approaches the desk with a pleasant smile, unaware that the next few minutes will bring a horrible shock. Good afternoon, Mr. Taylor. Hello, Irma. I telephoned for a rehearsal studio. I know, Mr. Taylor. Studio B is reserved. Are you going to be alone? Yes, I'm just going to run over a couple of new songs by myself. You'll find a piano inside the studio. All right, thanks, Irma. Oh, Mr. Taylor. Yes? I, I wonder if you'd mind putting your signature on the sheet of paper... I promised one of my girlfriends I'd get your autograph for her. Oh, no, I don't mind at all, Irma. Honestly, I'm the envy of all the girls in my neighborhood. They give their eye teeth to be a receptionist in the favorite rehearsal studio of a famous star like you, Mr. Taylor. Oh, I'm just another singer, Irma. Just another singer? Oh, why, Mr. Taylor, when you croon a love song over the radio or on the stage, why, the girls just faint and drove. <laughs> all right, there's my autograph, Irma. And thanks for the build-up. I'll be in the studio for about an hour. All right, Mr. Taylor. <sighs> Acme Rehearsal Hall. Oh, hello, Helen. Guess who just walked in here? Don Taylor. <laughs> yes. And I got his autograph for you. Oh, he's just wonderful in person, Helen. He's not the least bit swell-headed, even though he's a famous star. Oh, and he's just fascinating. And when he sings... Helen, wait. I just heard something that sounded like shots. I'll talk to you later, Helen. Mr. Taylor? <gasps> Mr. Taylor! Oh, no! Operator, get the police. It's Don Taylor, the famous singer. He's been murdered. Mr. Keene, did you read this headline in the papers? I haven't had a chance to look at the newspapers this morning, Mike. But the famous singer, crooner, Don Taylor, was shot to death yesterday afternoon in a rehearsal studio. Oh, really? And it says here the police are stymied. the day. Can I help you, ma'am? Hi, you, Mr. Keene, sir. Well, I'm his partner, Mike Clancy. Uh, this gentleman here is Mr. Keene. My name is Amy Taylor. Are you related to Don Taylor, the famous crooner who was shot yesterday? I... I'm his wife, Mr. Keene. Please, sit down. Thank you. We were just 
reading about the tragedy in the papers, Mrs. Taylor. Oh, it was horrible. Why should anyone want to kill Tom? Mrs. Taylor, I assure you that you have all our sympathy. We were happy together, Mr. King. In spite of what people said, no one was any closer to Don than I was. And just what were people saying about you, Mrs. Taylor? Well, Don was the idol of millions of women all over the country. Women who were beautiful, not plain like me. So some people decided Don must be seeing other women behind my back. Well, sure, and far as his reputation was concerned, I never heard nothing against it. Neither did I, Mike. But a man in the limelight is always open to unfair attacks. I... I don't know who murdered him or why, but it had nothing to do with our domestic life. Mr. King, I have some money, insurance left to me by Don. I'll gladly give you any part of it if you'll take this case and see that his murder is caught and punished. I'll take the case, Mrs. Taylor, but not because of the money you offer. Your husband was a fine young artist. I happen to know that he played countless benefits for the poor and for the sick. His background was in the great tradition of all performers. And I'm going to see that justice is done, at least to his memory. Thank you, Mr. King. No. Is there anything you can tell us that might help us in our investigation? All I know is that Don left the house about three in the afternoon and went to the rehearsal studio. He was going to rehearse a new song. Don could concentrate on singing better away from the house where he wouldn't be bothered by telephone calls. Whoever killed him must have known that and planned to trap him in the rehearsal studio. Who found his body? A, a young girl receptionist. There were two entrances to the studio Don was working in, Mr. King. The killer escaped through one of them. And there's no one you suspect of the crime? Well, there was someone who'd bothered Don for the past few weeks, but I don't know who she was. Then how did you know about her, Mrs. Taylor? Mr. Fleming mentioned something to me. Arthur Fleming, the Broadway producer. Don had been appearing in a musical show of his for the past two months. And what did Mr. Fleming tell you? He called me up once and asked me if a dark-haired woman had tried to force her way into our home to speak to Don. I said no, and Mr. Fleming told me to forget about it. Did you mention it to your husband? Yes, but Don laughed it off. Said the woman was an autograph, Frank. But underneath, I had a feeling that he was worried. Mrs. Taylor, where can I reach Mr. Fleming, the Broadway producer? His office is above the Grand Theater. We'll go down and see him now, Mike. Okay, Mr. King. Mrs. Taylor, from all appearances, this case is an extremely difficult one to solve. When a murder involves a man like your husband, who was in the public eye, any one of a number of people may have had a hand in it. Well, then, Mr. King, you think it's hopeless to try to find the person who murdered Don? No case is hopeless. But you must have patience. And above all, caution. Caution? Until we find out who the murderer is, there's always a chance that you may be next on the list, Mrs. Taylor. You mean the motive for the murder may have something to do with me? Jealousy of you. Hatred of you. It's always a possibility with a handsome man who's a star and matinee idol. Oh, yes, I understand, Mr. King. All right, Mike. Let's get started. Perhaps we can pick up the first scent on our trail for murder at Mr. Fleming's office at the Grand Theater. Well, the box office clerk said Mr. Fleming's office was at the head of the stairs, Mr. Keene. Uh, this must be it, Mike. for Mr. Arthur Fleming. Oh, he's not here at the moment. My name is Keene, and this is Mr. Clancy. We're investigating the murder of Don Taylor. Oh. Well, Father's downstairs in the theater auditorium. He's listening to a singer who may replace Don in the show. So Mr. Fleming is your father? Yes, Mr. Keene. My name's Janice Fleming. I do office work for Dad when I have the time. Are, are you working with the police? Not exactly. We were asked to investigate the case by Mrs. Taylor, Don's wife. Mrs. Taylor? How come you're so surprised, young lady? It just seems odd to me, Mr. Clancy. Why, Miss Janice? Well, perhaps I'd, I'd better not say anything. I don't want to incriminate anyone. Are you referring to Mrs. Taylor? Frankly, yes. She's a very sweet girl, Mr. King, but she was horribly jealous. Of her husband? Yes. Well, that's not how we heard it, Miss Fleming. Naturally, Mrs. Taylor wouldn't tell you all the facts, but... 
I'll do if you want me to. I'd appreciate it. Well, Don Taylor and I became very good friends with the king. In fact, for a while, I I thought he was falling in love with me. I tried to discourage him, of course, but his wife found out about it and they had a violent quarrel. Which you overheard? Yes, Mr. King. It was in Don's dressing room downstairs in the theater and I happened to be right outside. I was astonished. I had always thought of Amy Taylor as timid, mousy in a way. And yet there she was threatening to kill Don if he ever talked to me again. Boss. That seems to be something Mrs. Taylor left out of her story. Yes, Mike. Mr. Keene, I'm not saying she murdered Don. I'm just telling you the facts. Well, something tells me, boss, we'd better have another talk with Mrs. Taylor. I think you're right, Mike. But before we leave, Miss Janice, I'd like to speak to your father. Of course, I'll, I'll take you to him now. Come with me, Mr. Keene, Mr. Clancy. <coughs> Father's in an awful jam right now. He's got to find a substitute singer for Don Taylor. And the musical show is going to continue? Oh, yes. Through here, Mr. King. We seem to be inside the theater auditorium. That's odd. Dad was on stage a little while ago. I wonder if... Keep away from me! Keep away! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Thanks, Who was that? He came from one of the dressing rooms backstage. Come on, Mike. And make sure your gun is handy. Right, Mr. King, sir. This door leaves backstage, Mr. King. Open it, Mike. Janice, keep away from here. And what's happened, Mr. Fleming? Dad, this is Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. Mr. Keene, good. I'd have gone for the police, but I was afraid she'd get away. She locked herself in that dressing room, and she just threatened me with a gun. Who threatened you, Mr. Fleming? Her name is Mildred Sellers. At least that's what she told me when I found her trying to steal Don Taylor's things. Was this the murdered Don Taylor's dressing room? Yes, Mr. Keene. I found this Mildred Sellers stuffing some pictures of Don Taylor in her handbag, along with several other things he left on his dressing table. When I tried to put her out... She pulled a gun. She told me to get out, and then she locked the door. Hey, Mike, see if you can get inside that dressing room. Well, shooting the lock off is the only way, Mr. Keene. But maybe she'll listen to reason. The cellar. Open up in there. Keep away from that door, or I'll shoot right through it. Miss Sellers, no one is going to hurt you. Open the door. We only want to talk to you. Ah, oh, it's no use, boss. She'll stay locked up in there unless we butt down the door. I guess we have no choice, Mike. Be careful, Mr. Keene. She's dangerous. You'd better stand aside with your daughter, Mr. Fleming. Come over here, Janice. Yes, Father. All right, Mike. Shoot the lock off. It's your last chance, Miss Sellers. Come out quietly, or we're coming in to take you. Well, that's that. Here goes. Right. What's your step, Mike? Hoy. Mr. Keene, the room is empty. Well, that window's open. It leads to the fire escape. Quickly, Mike. No. No, she's gone, boss. She got away. Mr. Keene, do you think she, the, the cellar's woman, could have murdered Don Taylor? I don't know, Miss Janice. You supplied us with another suspect yourself. After what you told us of Don Taylor's violent quarrel with his wife. His wife was so jealous of him. And so you said. But I now believe we will find out who killed him even though this case seems to get far more complex and mysterious as we go along. Mr. Keene will return in just a moment. But first, here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy to take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist. <laughs> Now back to Mr. Keyes and the case of murder 
and the strange woman. Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the murder of Don Taylor, an immensely popular singer, who was shot to death in a rehearsal studio. We find Mr. Keene and Mike backstage at the Grand Theater with Arthur Fleming, the theatrical producer, and his daughter Janice, who has hinted that Amy Taylor, the singer's wife, may have been responsible for his death. A new suspect has appeared on the scene, however. A woman named Mildred Sellers has attempted to steal some photographs of the murdered man. And as Mike takes a final look out of the dressing room window, which the woman used to escape... Well, there isn't a chance to catch her, Mr. Keene. She might be a couple of blocks away by now. Do you know who she is, Mr. Fleming? Her name, as I told you, Mr. Keene, is Mildred Sellers. A few weeks ago, you warned Mrs. Taylor about some woman who was trying to see Don. Is this the woman? Yes. Uh, I think she's mentally unbalanced. She tried to force her way into the theater several times to see Don. She evidently thought she was madly in love with him. Which might explain why she tried so desperately to get hold of his photograph. She's crazy enough to have murdered him, Mr. Keene. For a moment, I thought she'd take a shot at me. Mr. Fleming, do you happen to know where this Mildred Sellers might be found? No, Mr. Keene. She told me her name. That's all I know. Well, suppose you give a description of the woman to the police. They'll send an alarm out and pick her up. I'll do that right away. Is there anything else you can tell me in regard to the murder, Mr. Fleming? No. But I'm willing to wager this Sellers woman was the one who killed Don Taylor. I'm not so sure, Father. Your daughter Janice here overheard a violent quarrel between Don Taylor and his wife Amy. Amy threatened to kill him. But that doesn't seem possible. You don't know anything about it, Father. I've told Mr. Keene the truth. I wasn't doubting your word, Janice. I think Mrs. Taylor should have a chance to defend herself. I'd like you to come to her home with me, Janice. And have this out. Whatever you say, Mr. King. And meanwhile, I'll put that call through to police headquarters, Mr. King. If they take the Sellers woman into custody, you may have a quick solution to the crime. That all depends, Mr. Fleming. At any rate, we'll go and see Amy Taylor right now. Mr. Keene, Mr. Clancy. You've met Janice Fleming, Mrs. Taylor. Yes. How are you, Janice? Very well, thank you. Please sit down. Mr. Clancy, why are you looking at me like that? Oh, I was just thinking. Uh, Mrs. Taylor, we were both wondering if your original story was the truth. But, Mr. Keene, why should I lie? To protect yourself, naturally. I don't quite understand, Janice. You killed Don. Don't deny it. You're the one who murdered him. How could you say a thing like that, Janice Fleming? Oh, no, no. Take it easy, miss. Mr. Keene, what has she told you? Uh, Janice told us that you had a violent quarrel with your husband, Don, and that you threatened to kill him. That's not true. Are you calling me a liar? Oh, just a moment, please. Mrs. Taylor, Janice said she overheard the arguments. And that it was about her. I never threatened anyone in my life, Mr. King. Least of all the man I loved. You knew he was seeing me. No. Don wasn't seeing you, Janice. You were forcing your attentions on him. That's a lie. Mr. King, this girl, Janice Fleming, is spoiled. Her father has pampered her throughout her life. She became infatuated with my husband. But he failed to respond. Don came after me. I never chased a man and I never will. Go on, Mrs. Taylor. Don told me how wildly angry she got. Oh, because he ignored her. He was polite to her only because of her father. Don was working in Arthur Fleming's show. So, Mrs. Taylor, had you ever had a violent quarrel with your husband? Oh, no, Mr. Keene. We quarreled once several weeks ago, but it wasn't violent. I wanted Don to leave the show. Why? But he was working too hard. He, he acted a little peevish about it. But I found out why. What was the reason, Mrs. Taylor? Money. Mrs. Taylor. You mean a man as famous and successful as your husband was worried about money? Well, Don made a great deal, Mr. Clancy, but he spent his money like water. And then the show wasn't going too well either. It wasn't. And Don worked on a percentage basis. Well, sure, and I heard the show was a big success. You did, Mike? Yes, just the other night, boss, when I was listening to Walter Winchell's broadcast. Ah, oh, the show is a hit, all right. But the production costs are very high, and the investors have to be paid off first. You know a great deal about your father's business, don't you, Janice? I... I told you I helped him at times, Miss Keene. You also seem to know a great deal about the private lives of other people. Most of which doesn't seem to be true. You believe Amy Taylor, don't you? All right, all right, go ahead. But you'll find out how right I am soon enough. Well, 
That one's sure a cutie when it comes to having a temper. Mr. King, I swear to you that I've told the truth about my relationship with my husband. If, if you feel there's anything in what that girl Janice Fleming told you, you can put me under arrest. There's not quite enough evidence to put anyone under arrest yet, Mrs. Taylor. Oh, excuse me, please. Hello? Well, yes, he's here. Oh, just a moment, Mr. Fleming. It's for you, Mr. King. Arthur Fleming? Yes. He seems to be very excited about something. Hello? What? Where are you now? Very well. Make certain she doesn't get away again. Mike Clancy and I will be right over. What's up, boss? Arthur Fleming's found Mildred Sellers, Mike. She's in his office. Mr. King, was she the woman my husband was worried about? Yes, Mrs. Taylor. At first, I didn't believe her guilty of the murder. But I may have been wrong. Come on, Mike. It's only a matter of minutes now before we solve the mystery of who murdered Don Taylor. Mr. Fleming. Oh, there you are, Mr. Keenan, Mr. Clancy. I'm glad you didn't waste any time. I've been holding this woman at bay with this revolver. Are you Mildred Sellers? That's none of your business. Yeah, it looks as though we're going to have a bit of trouble with this one, boss. Miss Sellers, I'm afraid you don't know how serious this is. I think she does, Mr. Keene. You see that hole in the wall over there? Why, it's a bullet hole. Yes, Mr. Clancy. She took a shot at me and missed just before I took her gun away from her. Is that true, Miss Sellers? You shouldn't have tried to grab me that way. You came here to steal something. I found you going through my desk. I came here to meet Don Taylor. He phoned me and told me to come over here to the theater. I'm sure she's as balmy as they come, boss. And so it appears, Mike. Mr. Keene, it seems to me she's only pretending. Miss Sellers, don't you know that Don Taylor is dead? Don is dead? Yes. Oh, no, I don't believe it. You're lying to me. Hand me that newspaper on the desk, Mike. Right, boss. Here. Here. You can see for yourself. Look at the headline. Oh, no. Don's voice was the most wonderful I ever heard. I lived for only that. You mean you didn't kill him? Kill him? Kill the man I worshipped? That's quite an act she's putting on, Mr. King. But the facts can be easily proven. Can they, Mr. Fleming? How? I took this gun away from her. The police experts can check it with the two bullets that were fired at Don Taylor. I'll take that gun, if you don't mind. He you are, Mr. King. However, the evidence still doesn't point to this woman, Mildred Sellers. But who else is there to suspect? Janice. Father, I... Mr. King. What are you holding in your hands, Janice? Nothing, I... Let me see those books. No. Are those your account books, Mr. Fleming? The ones you used for your musical show? I... I guess they are. I have a feeling they've been doctored. Doctored? Your daughter kept the accounts for you part of the time, didn't she? Yes, Mr. King. Then she's the one who doctored them. She changed the figures after stealing money that was owed to Don Taylor. What? Mr. Fleming, you asked me whom I suspected of killing Don Taylor. Well, I'll tell you. I'm going to arrest Janice, your daughter, for murder. No. Oh, no. Put the handcuffs on her, Mike. Wait, Mr. King, leave my daughter alone. If you want a confession, you can get it from me. I murdered Don Taylor. Father. I thought that little ruse would bring a confession from you, Fleming. Your daughter is probably the one person in the world you'd protect. A rose? You mean you had no real evidence against my daughter? No. But I was pretty certain my hunch about you was correct. After I examined this gun you claim you took from Mildred Zellers. Search him, Mike. Yeah, with pleasure, boss. Here. Here's another gun, Mr. Keene. It's undoubtedly the one that Mildred Zellers owned. They look alike. And you switched them, Fleming, to plant the murder weapon on an innocent woman. How did you know that, King? Only one shot was fired at you. Yet there are two empty chambers in this gun you gave me. They were the shots fired when Don Taylor was murdered. Now break the second gun, Mike. Right, sir. Well, there's been one bullet fired from it, Mr. Keene. Yes. The bullet this poor, demented woman, Mildred Sellers, fired at Fleming. Father, I was going to try and hide the account books for you. I found out myself that you've been keeping money from Don Taylor. Is that why you killed him, Fleming? Yes. But that isn't the whole reason, Mr. Keene. I'm also to blame. I was crazy about Don. 
I told Father to buy him or, or force him in some way to divorce his wife and marry me. That, that story I told you about Don quarreling with Amy, his wife, was a lie. You stay out of this, Janice. I killed Don Taylor Keene and I admit it. What more do you want? Did you murder him in cold blood? No. I met him in that rehearsal studio. We had a fight. I pulled the gun and shot him twice. Because he found out you were cheating him of his rightful share of the show's earnings? Yes. That and the fact that he snubbed my daughter. Who did you think he was? I could buy ten singers like Don Taylor without going broke. You're trying very hard to create sympathy for yourself, Fleming, and escape the electric chair. But it won't work. The fact that you carried a gun along with you when you met Don Taylor proves you intended to kill him. And then you tried to pin your crime on Mildred Sellers here, a woman who obviously can't protect herself. It was murder in the first degree, and you'll have to pay for it in the death house. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the case of murder and the strange woman. Here's a word from RCA Victor. There's one good reason for you to buy television. It's fun. And there's no better reason for you to stop in at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow and see the wide selection of RCA Victor television sets available now. You and your family will have a lot more fun every day of the week, all year round, with television in your home. Tomorrow, you can buy the receiver you want, the right one to suit your budget. And here's a good reason for you to buy RCA Victor television. It's the best. You get a clearer picture, a steadier picture, a picture locked in place with RCA Victor's exclusive eyewitness picture synchronizer. And besides the world of entertainment television brings you, you will find the RCA Victor television set of your choice, a magnificent addition to your living room. It's wonderful to look at, beautiful to see. RCA Victor Million Proof Television. Listen again next week to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, the new weekly feature on NBC's All-Star Festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. By Anison, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Philip Clark plays Mr. Keene. Richard Leonard is the director. Your announcer, Jack Costello. Remember, Mr. Keene is now on the air at this new time, every Friday at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Friday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the photograph album Murder Case. Next, join Roy Shield. Sunday, it's the symphony on NBC.